Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about stomach pain, in particular gallbladder. What does gallbladder pain look like? What is the anatomy? What are some of the signs and symptoms? And how do we remedy some of the issues related to gallbladder pain? So let's get right into it. So we're looking at stomach pain, the gallbladder. When we look at it, we first have to understand the anatomy of the gallbladder. So in my rudimentary drawing here, we have the liver and sitting underneath the liver is the gallbladder in green. So basically it's right in here underneath. So when we look at it, the liver produces bile or bile acids and it goes down and it stores within the gallbladder, right? So it go, comes down the common hepatic duct and then the gallbladder will, will store it and then will contract as necessary and it will pump right through here through the cystic duct coming down into the common bile duct. And the reason I'm reviewing this anatomy is because it's important to understand where the stone might get caught causing you symptoms, right? If you have gallstones. So liver, bile production stored in the gallbladder through the different ducts, okay? When we have issues with that, you may experience pain right here in the right upper quadrant, right under the rib cage. So if you push down, you may feel a little bit uncomfortable. When it gets um, problematic, it starts to refer into the shoulder area or the mid back on the right side. And the reason that occurs with the referral pain is that there is a nerve called the phrenic nerve that it's irritated and that is innervated by uh, cervical nerves C3, 4, and 5. Okay, This phrenic nerve will travel back up into the neck area and cause dermatomal pain related to C3, 4, and 5. So you may have pain generalized into that right shoulder and into the mid-back region or what we call the mid-scapular region. So the referral pain is, is a result of nerve irritation that refers into the right shoulder and mid-back area. Now, there are a lot of different terms for what can happen here, right? Cholelestiasis is basically gallstones or stones within the gallbladder, right? A lot of these can be asymptomatic because they're small, right? But when it does become problematic, it can cause something called biliary colic. Is sporadic, intermittent, usually with food, high fat foods or oils, right? So when you have a fatty meal, you may have sporadic or intermittent contraction of the gallbladder where it's compressing on the stones and it's creating some discomfort, okay? It could be a little bit of discomfort, kind of vague discomfort into the right shoulder. Now, the more uh, important thing is the stone can get caught up in the cystic duct and that's called cholecystitis. So the stone from the liver, I mean the gallbladder, will come up and will get caught right in here in the cystic duct. When that happens, the gallbladder itself becomes inflamed and that's why it's called cholecystitis, inflammation. And you can create fever, a low-grade fever, increased heart rate, sweating, etc. This is why some people will uh, mistake gallbladder issues with heart issues and they end up in the emergency room and the doctors will say, oh no, it's your gallbladder, you didn't have a heart attack. So this is inflammatory because the stone is getting caught in the cystic duct. The next one is cholecystitis, which is a stone that's caught in the common bile duct, right? Comes down right in here. It gets caught right in here, the stone. And then now that you causes jaundice because you have buildup of bile, and then your, your stool color will look uh, clayish, or clay color, a white kind of um, a mixture. And then you can also have dark urine, okay? So associated with vomiting, nausea, and the symptomatology is more significant it can last up to six hours, seven hours. You can have inflammation. Uh, you can have uh, pain, fever, etc. So there's a lot of things going on with that. 
Acute cholangitis is when this is blocked off and you have inflammation above, right? So it affects the biliary tree, the, all the uh, connections down into the stomach area, the gallbladder, down from the uh, liver. So that causes um, significant discomfort, inflammation, and it could be a medical emergency. Oftentimes you can do what we call a Murphy sign. So you push down right into it, have the patient breathe in and out. And as they breathe out, they, they get startled or they have a lot of rebounding pain in that right upper quadrant. So that's called a Murphy sign. And you can also have fever and jaundice, etc. Right? So I'm just trying to explain what can happen medically when you have gallbladder issues or when you have gall, gall, gallstones that are stuck within the ducts that come down uh, into the stomach area. Okay? So this is our basic physiology. So let's get into some of the signs and symptoms of gallbladder issues. What are the subtle signs and symptoms? Right? We don't want to get to the point where this uh, gallstone gets really stuck and creates a lot of problems and you may have to have surgery or your gallbladder removed. We want to catch it before that. So what are some of the clinical signs and symptoms of a gallbladder problem before it actually happens? So common signs and symptoms. When you eat greasy or high fat foods, it causes abdominal distress. You get some discomfort, just don't feel right, a little nauseous, etc. Right? Lower bowel gas and bloating, usually several hours after that fatty meal. So you're getting it more in the lower stomach, bloating, gas, etc. Then you have also can have bitter metallic taste in your mouth, in particular in the morning, right? You have this kind of metal type taste in the mouth. Another one is burpy or fishy taste in your mouth after you take some fish oil. So some people will say, oh, my fish oil is so bad, it, does, it just comes up on me. Oftentimes we find that is a gallbladder problem. Unexplained itchiness of the skin. So you're just scratching. I don't know why. I'm so itchy, right? Now, you have to differentiate between, you know, allergies and skin irritation or skin conditions. But if you have some of these other symptoms and you have unexplained itchiness of the skin, it can be the gallbladder. Yellow cast eyes. So we talked about jaundice. Jaundice is basically your skin becomes more yellow. Your eye, the white of your eye becomes more yellowish. So you can have yellow cast eyes. You can also have reddening of your palms um, and also the bottom of your feet. And then the other one is dry, flaky skin. So these are your kind of clinical signs and symptoms before it becomes really big and problematic. Obviously, jaundice is a problem, you know, more advanced. But what can we do about it, right? So standard American diet is full of processed sugars, uh, refined carbohydrates, processed grains, etc. And I think that is a major culprit in people having gallbladder issues. So reducing refined sugars and refined grains, right? Eating less frequently. So let's go into that. So eating less frequently will help uh, minimize the contraction of the gallbladder and help the gallbladder store some of those bile uh, acids from the liver. And that in itself can dissolve some of the gallstones or sludginess of the gallbladder. So eating frequently makes the gallbladder contract all the time, right? So it becomes problematic for the gallbladder. Um, so eating smaller, uh, not smaller, but less frequently. Let's say you eat just breakfast, lunch, and dinner, no snacks. Or you can do lunch and dinner and no snacks. And you can do what we call intermittent fasting type of protocol. The other is avoiding nuts. Um, one is, is hard to digest, um, but we find that it's uh, problematic for people who have gallbladder problems, right? Especially walnuts. Now, nutritionally or supplement-wise, we can do a lot of different things. There's dandelion extract, choline, milk, thistle, ginger extracts, beet powder, uh, ox bile. You can do choline, uh, we put choline twice in here, and then artichoke extract. So these are some nutritional supplements can help soften the gall, uh, gallstones or the sludginess. It can get your bile flowing a little bit better. 
So uh, gallbladder support in this manner can be quite beneficial for people who have a lot of these symptoms. Now, people also do what we call gallbladder flushes or liver flushes. Uh, you have to be careful with that one, okay? Uh, for some people it will work, and for a small percentage it will not. And the reason is when you have a gallbladder flush, you're trying to flush the gallstones out of the gallbladder. What can happen is the gallstone can get caught in the hepatic duct, or the uh, cystic duct, or the common bile duct. And then now it becomes more problematic because now you have acute pain, you end up in the hospital, and so forth. So when you do these home remedies for drinking like a bunch of apple juice with lemon, um, olive oil, etc., uh, I caution you uh, because it may uh, land you in the hospital, all right? Um, so you have to be ca cautious. You have to know the size of your the stones in the gallbladder. So some diagnostic testing like ultrasound to look at the gallstones uh, could be beneficial, and you can decide whether you want to do a flush at home. Um, but I caution you, if you have large stones, not to do that because it will get caught and you will end up in the emergency room probably needing uh, removal of the gallbladder, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. On the other flip side, I will uh, put some links to some of the supplements that uh, have all these ingredients in there, so you can purchase them on the online store. And I would like you to go ahead and share and subscribe to the channel, because we would like to spread the information uh, about natural health. It's not just about doing uh, medications or doing surgery there are alternatives to taking care of yourself and this channel is dedicated to helping patients understand what's going on with them understanding the condition and making the right educated decision for yourself being an advocate for yourself to your doctors okay my name is dr. Jin Sung where clinical excellence meets excellent results and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side have an awesome day